I recognize the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, Dr. Clever Gatete. I recognize the Deputy Executive Secretary for UNECA, Ambassador Pedro. I also recognize the Chair of the UNECA uh, Bureau, other government officials here uh, uh, present, esteemed guests, uh, delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Bonjour. Bon dia. Karibu. Sabaha Hill. Let me begin by welcoming you all to Zimbabwe, especially to this majestic Victoria Falls, one of the seventh wonders of the world. I wish to express our deepest appreciation for the opportunity to host the 56th session of the UNECA Conference of African Ministers of Finance, Planning, Economic Development, running under the theme, Financing the Transition to Inclusive Green Economies in Africa, uh, looking at the imperatives, the opportunities, and the policy options. Allow me to take this opportunity to extend my sincere congratulations to Dr. Claire Vergatete on his appointment as the Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. We wish him a successful tenure at the helm of UNECA. We also want to, want to commend UNECA's support towards development of Africa over the years, uh, uh, ES Pedro. Uh, among other sectors, UNECA has provided support to the African Union and its member states in the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, this conference offers an important platform for African Ministers of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, Central Bank Governors to converge and exchange ideas, experiences and knowledge. This year, the esteemed gathering provides us an opportunity to foster greater understanding and collaboration among African Ministers of Finance, ICT, Trade, Industry and Environment on the theme of our conference. Implementation of this important theme requires a whole of government approach. As you are aware, the primary objective of this conference is to promote the economic and social development of our member states, to foster intra-regional integration and promote international cooperation for Africa's development. It is also an opportunity for us to collectively address the challenges and opportunities that uh, that lie ahead as we continue to navigate the post-COVID-19 era. Ladies and gentlemen, the hungry world cannot uh, be fed until and unless there is a balance in growth of resources, technology, and population. It is unfortunate that Africa is not leveraging its resources enough. This is including its land. As you know, the continent has around 127 million hectares of potentially irrigable land, of which only th around 13% of this land is currently used for irrigation. Only 13% of the 127 million hectares. We have vast water bodies to irrigate our rich soils. Uh, all we need is investment in advanced uh, uh, irrigation technology and enough funding for climate to climate-proof our agriculture as we strive to become food secure. Financing the transition to inclusive green economies comes with a cost, and we need to finance this transition with the support of the international community and promoting investment in renewable and environmentally friendly uh, sources of energy. Uh, colleagues, it is high time we join hands as a continent and strengthen our existing regional trading blocks such as the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFC, CTA, to promote the free movement of goods, services, and people within Africa. I call upon all member states uh, uh, to remove barriers to all, uh, to all entry and exit points so that we create a single market for goods and services that promote intra-Africa trade as well as uh, overall industrial development. It is my hope that the AFC, AFCTA will make Africa 
more competitive uh, in the global economy and that it will create jobs and increase economic growth across the entire continent. Uh, colleagues, uh, uh, there is an urgent need for domestic resource mobilization towards financing the transition to inclusive green economies as it helps to mobilize private sector investment in climate change uh, uh, mitigation and adaptation projects. I also call for experts here present to interrogate the role of the current architecture of the international financial system and institutions in view of the unequal impact of the global shocks on weaker countries uh, on, on our continent. As you are aware, Africa is limited fiscal and monetary policy space to respond to shocks and is often highly dependent on international financial institutions. For example, during the peak of COVID-19, countries were given special drawing rights by the IMF, and the SDRs. However, uh, most of the poor countries in Africa uh, received a, a small share compared to the rest of the world, a small share compared to the uh, development gap that needed to be funded uh, uh, here in Africa. It is worth mentioning that African countries are growing and geopolitical tensions and the impact of climate change, uh, hence all these posed a, a, a negative financial impact on the continent. Therefore, the continent needs additional financing mechanisms to meet this growing demand. The emergence of non-traditional lenders in recent years has also uh, uh, complicated, but also created uh, opportunities uh, for debt resolution uh, processes. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to highlight that Africa's greenhouse emissions are relatively low compared to the rest of the world, accounting for less than 5% of global emissions. However, Africa is disproportionately affected by the negative impact of climate change, which includes extreme weather, events such as droughts, floods, uh, and, and heat waves. According to the Intergovernmental Panel uh, on Climate Change, the IPCC, the 10 warmest years in the 174-year record have all occurred during the last decade, between 2014 and 2023. This trend is attributed to the ongoing effects of climate change, including the greenhouse effect and the loss of ice and snow cover. This impact is exacerbated by the fact that many African countries lack the resources and infrastructure to adapt to climate change. This has led uh, to increased poverty in some areas and vulnerability, uh, crop losses, loss of human lives, and hence the need for a just and fair energy transition process. Ladies and gentlemen, in our region, as a result of climate change, in March 2019, Cyclone Idai led to the loss of over 1,000 people in Mozambique. It caused widespread devastation in Zimbabwe with at least 259 people losing their lives and leaving over 500,000 people in need of urgent assistance. It destroyed homes, roads, bridges, cutting off access to food, clean water, and medical care. In Malawi, for example, the cyclone affected nearly 900,000 people, with more than 230,000 people uh, being di displaced as a result. Currently, drought and average conditions have become dominant across the southern region, and the impact is more severe along the belt extending from the northern half of Namibia, uh, Angola, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and into most of Mozambique. This therefore calls for a concerted effort for rapid and, uh, and, and deep emissions cuts by the developed countries and uh, accelerated actions to adapt to climate change to limit the severity of the least polluting countries in Africa, uh, and Africa is most affected. As an adaptation measure to combat climate change uh, impacts, African countries should consider taking advantage of, art of artificial intelligence to fight the effects of climate change, such as droughts, which result in crop failures, as we know. 
According to the United Nations Environmental Program, UNAP, the total cost of transitioning to a low carbon and climate change resilient economy in Africa is estimated at around 130 to 170 billion US dollars annually between now and the year 2030. This includes the cost of investing in clean energy, sustainable agriculture, water management, and building climate resilient infrastructure. However, the benefits of making these transitions are estimated to be much higher with a potential net benefit of up to uh, uh, 3 trillion US dollars uh, per year up to the year 2030. As you are aware, at COP2015 in, in 2009, developed countries committed to, uh, collect, uh, to a collective goal of mobilizing 100 billion US dollars per year by 2020 for climate change uh, financing in developing countries in the context of meaningful mitigation actions, uh, uh, funding for adaptation, technology transfer, and capacity building and, tran and transparency on implementation of these commitments. However, we are now in 2024, and African countries have not yet received the 100 billion US dollars so promised uh, in climate finance uh, uh, by these developed countries. As stated in the, uh, in the African uh, Leaders Nairobi Declaration on Climate Change and Call to Action, Africa can be a global powerhouse for climate action and offers an opportunity for investments for the continent to be, to, to the, to, to be a green industrial hub. It is important to unlock the renewable energy resources that we have on our continent. Zimbabwe, on the strength of its renewable and non-renewable resources, have, has investment opportunities in solar energy, uh, in critical mineral, minerals such as lithium. Zimbabwe has the largest deposits of lithium on the African uh, uh, continent, for example. Uh, the nearby Zambezi River, on which the Victoria Falls is found, provides a huge opportunity for hydropower. Uh, so far, uh, we know that uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia, and Mozambique are extracting hydropower from this river uh, with incredible uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, opportunities still remaining to be exploited, particularly on the Zimbabwe and Mozambique side. And we're looking into building uh, hydroelectric facilities along this river. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa is already in debt uh, distress and, for the sub and, and the sub-Saharan African region alone uh, is experiencing high levels of indebtedness. We see that in, in year 2022, debt was as high as 833 billion US dollars. According to the IMF, if you look at the medium public debt ratios, uh, these have increased from about, uh, by, by 30 percentage points, from 28.8% of GDP in 2012, increased to about 59.1% of GDP in 2022. You can see that debt levels have risen since 2012, and this is clearly unpalatable. The increases over the last decade are due to a series of shocks, including the COVID-19 pandemic, climate-related events, natural disasters, and high international prices of food, fuel, fertilizers in the aftermath of the geopolitical uh, uh, tensions and conflicts. Worth noting, uh, efforts put in place through the G20 Common Framework for resolving, foreign, uh, 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 for resolving sovereign debt crises. The framework re uh, 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 aims to provide a coordinated and orderly approach to debt restructuring uh, to prevent and resolve debt crisis while promoting economic growth and development. The current market environment has become challenging for many African countries with access to market uh, financing tightening up and becoming very expensive as advanced economies have raised interest rates uh, to fight inflation and international investors have become more risk averse. Official financing flows are also trending downwards relative to the country's economic size and, uh, and, and needs. As a result, it is becoming increasingly difficult for countries to roll over their maturing debt forcing them to make difficult 
policy choices, including defaults. In this context, debt restructuring has become a growing concern for African countries that are experiencing debt vulnerabilities and risks to debt sustainability. In view of the above challenges, access to finance for Africa must be uh, made cheaper and easier. Hence, there is need to relocate the international financial architecture to ensure that it is fit for purpose. To support African countries to, at to, achieve, uh, to attain Agenda 2063 aspirations and to achieve the SDG goals by year 2030, and above all, to reduce poverty uh, and gender prosperity, which is in, in the, the main challenge for our, for our continent. In addition, due to lack of access to climate finance, African countries are not able to reduce the negative impacts of, of climate change we face year by year. To this end, I would like to join others. We have called for the reform of the global financial uh, architecture. Furthermore, the debt resolution mechanisms, such as the G20 uh, debt framework, and climate change funding must, or must be overhauled to accommodate Africa's special and specific needs. In addition, it is important that we valorize our natural capital by mainstreaming our natural capital accounting in our, in our national accounts. This would lead to a rebasing of our GDP and expansion of our physical space and reducing vulnerability to external shocks. As we discuss the issue of greening our economies, it is important to take into account our, our forests, which can be a source, of, uh, a source for, for, a force for development and also a, a force for, redu for reducing uh, carbon emissions. Honorable uh, ministers that have, uh, uh, that have listed above can become part of the formulation of an African common position for the summit of the future a future where Africa has an integral part and plays an important role in the transition to a greener and more sustainable world. This will be a future where Africa uses its natural resources to foster its industrialization and economic diversification, ending the export of raw materials. It is also important to overcome the digital gap by promoting digital uh, transformation in Africa. To this end, Science, technology, and innovation must be at the center of our education systems and development policies. This will help us create jobs for the youth as we continue with our efforts to, re to reduce poverty and gender prosperity on the continent. As ministers of finance, planning, and economic development, we have a big responsibility to make this a reality through allocation of resources, prioritization of investments, and achievement of structural transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I encourage all technocrats and government officials to freely share ideas and policy suggestions that will guide governments in decision making. I also encourage all of you to take advantage of the opportunity to visit the mighty Victoria Falls or Mosi Oya Tunya in the local uh, Tonga language, or the smoke that thunders, and explore what Zimbabwe has to offer. Let the thunder and beauty of this natural wonder inspire, inspire you as we discuss and deliberate on financing the transition to inclusive green economies in Africa, looking at imperatives, opportunities, and policy options. May your experience in Victoria Falls uh, be not only a memorable one, but also a reminder to our collective responsibility to protect, preserve our natural and cultural her heritage. I thank you. I wish you all a productive and an enlightening uh, conference. Merci beaucoup. Obrigado. Shukran.